this story is doing the rounds in Australian media. And look, it could be the case that it's all above board, but it could also be the case that her and her family are colluding to get to Australia. So they send her, you know, an abusive family, she needs to get away in, a, in an oppressive culture. And then, you know, we take her in. And then there's a big family reconciliation. And they all end up coming here, like she won't be going back there. And they've got a good case for that because the Saudi kingdom, it, it, these types of actions reflect badly on their culture and it's a criticism of their culture and the Saudis don't like it. So they don't mind people leaving the country under different pretenses, but not where it criticises their government. So they're going to fight, try and fight to get her back. Now let's assume that somehow without her family's help, this woman from this very oppressive regime has somehow got a passport, somehow got money to fly out of Saudi Arabia without her family's help, because over there a woman is, is under the guardianship of a male. So pretty much they would know their finances. But let's just say she's just managed to get around all that, somehow managed to, that's what I mean, that's why I think it's collusion with her family. But let's just say, you know, somehow she's got here in Thailand and um, she's seeking asylum in Australia. I'll just add also, it, security at airports for people getting on planes, you've got to show your ID. Even in Western countries like Australia, you can't just anonymously get onto a plane. You've got to, they need to know who you are. And in the Middle East, I think it's even more strict. And in a place like Saudi Arabia, where they control women, you, there would, it would certainly be difficult for a young woman to just die. Oh, yeah, here's who I am. I'm just flying to Australia. Given that a lot of women would leave for the purpose of seeking asylum outside of the country. So I'm just picturing the scene at the airport where she's getting on. She would need to have had a backstory or some kind of excuse. Now that may have come from her family. Perhaps they gave her permission because like I said, women over there are under the guardianship of a male. So she's flying unescorted out. Or perhaps there could be groups in Australia that have somehow teed up an excuse for her to come here outside of seeking asylum and she's given that sort of false information to Saudi. But look, somehow this young, unescorted woman in such an oppressive country for women has somehow managed to board a plane through all the security. Yeah, the original intention of this video was to look at it from the perspective that her story is true as she has told it. But the more I've been going into this story, so the UN is involved, heavily involved, which, you know, is more indication that this has been a planned and staged process. They won't let her drive or travel, but yet somehow she's in Bangkok. It's a bit un unusual. So either family has, you know, perhaps does let her travel or she's received outside assistance to travel. Because over in Saudi Arabia, a woman walking unescorted down the street, they get stopped by the police every 100 metres and they have to explain themselves. They're generally only allowed out in public if they're with a man. <laughs> That's how bad it is over there. So it's quite incredible that she's managed to beat all the... She's not allowed to drive, so she would have got public transport to the airport. She's got buddies. She's, look, you see what I'm saying? You know, the, like I said, this story is just turned into total bullshit. But we have strongly advocated with the Thai government and we have received reassurances that pending the completion of the assessment and any decision, she would not be sent back because that would be a case of reformant and where her uh, personal freedom could be put at risk. Okay, once sellout clowns like this that are tied up in the UN get involved, you know it's total bullshit. Now what he's saying there is that her personal freedom could be put at risk, but they already know that in Saudi Arabia women don't really have much freedom. So what is he saying? Every woman in Saudi Arabia should be just allowed out and not go back there? Because what about all the women that are still there that couldn't get out? What's the UN doing about them? Why are they only focused on this one woman? Again, I'll say that looks like this has been pre-planned for her to get to this stage and this clown is now. It looks like he's just reading his part of the script. As if they were, the UN was 
and the world community was that outraged by Saudi's treatment of women, wouldn't they just have sanctions against them? Just cut them out of the community? You can get oil from Iran and Russia if you need to. You don't need the Saudis if the treatment of women is so important that a woman can't go back. Yeah, nah, this is uh, bullshit. <laughs> วันนี้เนี่ยท่านกลัวสูญใหญ่ u n c r ท่านมาเองนะครับนะนะท่านยูเอเป้มาเองเพราะฉะนั้นท่านก็บอกผมเมื่อกี้ว่าท่านจะใช้เวลาไม่เกิน5วันจากนี้ถึงจะให้สาระเรียบร้อยแล้วก็ไม่เกิน5วันก็จะให้เรียนทางไปยังประเทศที่3ต่อไป After reading what that guy has just said, I'm pretty convinced that she's that third country is Australia and she's going to end up here, which you know it's Obviously, it's all been pre-planned and staged. But what's the purpose of her coming here? Because when she's coming here, she's just not going to silently, you know, slip into anonymity on welfare. I think, you know, she's young, she looks quite attractive, and she's got an oppressive message to tell. She's going to be on the media, and I think there's could be some messages, maybe some laws. I can't foresee them at the moment, but she could be part of a, you know, a really big operation. To uh, not just cost us a lot of money, but there might be more coming down the track. It's got me a bit perplexed. This one. And if you read that top paragraph, the Australian government already has serious concerns about her safety. Well, hasn't the UN Commission assess assessment not been done yet? Are they going to talk to her family, get her family side of the story? <laughs> well, it's just like a decision's already been made. Again, um, the only thing I can look. That she could be involved in is our immigration laws, so there may be changes coming in that regard. Because look, the UN wants borderless countries; they just want to, you know, a united. They call it a united world, but it's just a one world government without borders, where everyone's controlled. So maybe that's what's coming. That's what this might be about. Uh, and I'm still in the room. Uh, I have no choice. Uh, they said I have to go tomorrow, and uh, no one can help me right now. So she's got technology. She's got access to the internet, to Wi-Fi, to Twitter. She seems to be, for someone who's very oppressed, she seems to have, um, you know, a lot of means to express herself. Now this, you know, heartfelt plea from this young woman has been sent out across the world. If you read that. Saudi policy says a woman needs a male's relative's permission to work. So where does she get money from? Travel. How could she get to Bangkok or marry? So those first two, she seems to have managed to flout those that those permissions. Now, will you see any of those contradictions highlighted by mainstream media and that you know some in-depth questions, some forensic questions asked about exactly what is going on here? Well, of course not. They're all just reading the scripts that are given to them. So even though evidently this looks like it's a staged event that's going to have negative impacts on Australians, well certainly the taxpayers in the short term, and once she gets here, just her welfare bill alone is going to start costing us money. But I also think because it's so staged and contrived. Once she gets here, there's going to be some kind of maybe immigration law, push for immigration law change. I'm not too sure, which sort of brings me back to what I was. If this was above board, the question I was going to ask is, what is Australia's obligation to people like her in her situation? Well, bear in mind that she's had the means and has you know, had the freedom to actually get away. There's all the other women in Saudi Arabia who haven't had that. So why should we help her? <laughs> and we should we be trying to help all those other women? And how can you do it? Because look, their culture is entrenched and it's over fourteen, fifteen hundred years old. So if obviously either, even though the women are disadvantaged, there's to the point that they're oppressed and they can't overturn the this, this system that they've got there, then. They're pretty much stuck with it. That's just how their culture has come about. Now, that's not to say I should think they should accept it. I think over there they are, you know, having campaigns and they're always trying to chip away to change the law over there. And that's what you should do. Like when you see those million men of mili fighting military age all leave the Middle East and go to Europe, well, that's just taking the piss. They should be back there. Um, you know, Western governments apparently was 
especially the CIA, was apparently arming all the young men there to, you know, create their own freedoms. Well, that was a different sort of kettle of fish altogether than her situation. But it comes back to, you know, people in a troubled region, should the solution be to help them while they're there, help them either with the change in laws or to help them, you know, fight oppression if there's an overwhelming need for it? They're not doing that in Venezuela, though. In fact, Western organisations or businesses like Goldman Sachs, they're keeping that, that idiot in who's got the machine gun so they can get the oil. So, you know, the bigger picture thing is what is, you know, what, say back to what we should be doing. Well, I think that, you know, other than advocating on the world stage that how bad they are and they should change their laws, it's not practical for us to either monetarily or culturally to accept, you know, the whole country in. Now, that's not to say that I'm, you know, I'm against immigration. I think immigration, when it's done properly, is a good thing. You know, I genuinely believe that. I know a lot of people from other countries and they're really, really good blokes. So uh, they get along well. But I can certainly see, that's on a one-on-one -on -one level, but I can certainly see how the impact of a large number of people of a different culture could change the way of life on, on the whole. So that's just one thing I think, they, they, you know, in practical terms, that's something that you should look at. And particularly if they're trying to get to your country, then obviously you're doing something right. So why would you want to change it? So anyway, that's a story for another time. Like I said, I think this is a piss take in some regard. And I think the real damage is going to start to occur once she's here and she's on the media and she's telling her story and oh, maybe we should look at our immigration laws. So I think that's uh, it's going to negative impacts for Australia. All right, that's it.